What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and here is my iPhone SE review. So a lot of people have been making noise saying, Apple, please release a smaller new iPhone. And Apple's answer is this, the iPhone SE is a mid-cycle, mid-tier smartphone. It's definitely not supposed to make huge waves, but Apple did think this was necessary in their lineup. And here's why. Apple's missing out on a lot of profit in smaller, undeveloped countries. And so many people just refuse to upgrade, hanging on to their 5S, 5, and 4S models. The SE gives those people an option when choosing to update. So, this thing, design-wise, is, <laughs> how can I say, a doppelganger of the iPhone 5S. In fact, the shell is the exact same proportion. Everything is the same, except for the cutout for the Apple logo. So Apple is cutting a lot of corners everywhere in order to keep the price point low. And that's not a bad thing, and I'll explain why at the end. Comfort-wise, I really can't complain. This is one of the most comfortable phones, in my opinion. The smaller display, you know, the blocky design gives you something to hold on to. And it's definitely more comfortable than the iPhone 6S. The chamfered edges are no longer reflective like they were on the 5S. They are now a matte color matching the rest of the body. So as a result, you won't be getting all those scratches that you can see here. So let's start with the first corner that Apple cut, and that would be display. Displays are very important. We tend to interact with them a lot when we use our phones. So the iPhone SE display is the very same one as the 5S. That means nothing has changed. In fact, it's interchangeable with the 5S. When we're actually comparing it to a more advanced 6S display, the colors are better on the iPhone 6S. It's brighter and the viewing angles are slightly better. So this is something I'm very disappointed with in Apple. They didn't upgrade the display whatsoever. Resolution, I don't care about, but those other areas that make the display more enjoyable, even the contrast ratio, is certainly something Apple dropped the ball on on the iPhone SE. If you like the 5S display, then you'll like this one. But going from the 6S to the SE can be difficult because of the display. All right, so the design and the display hasn't changed. How about the materials? Materials are exactly the same as well. However, that doesn't mean it's not durable. The iPhone 5S, because of a blockier, thicker design, that makes it almost as durable as a 6S. Not quite, but hey, in my durability test, this thing went through quite a bit and even survived most of the tests. So durability-wise, nothing to worry about. So what else did the SE keep or not change whatsoever? I was surprised to learn that the 5S, 6, and 6S all make up the SE. Apple took a bunch of parts they had laying around in the warehouse in order to build the SE, so they're saving a ton of research and development costs. Same LCD, front-facing camera, earpiece, speaker, proximity sensor, vibration motor, SIM tray, and I could go on and on. Not much has changed, but the important things have. There are two major challenges with building this kind of a phone for Apple. What kind of features to put inside of it without making it necessarily too cheap, but to keep the price point low. Apple actually stuck in the A9 chip from the iPhone 6S into this, meaning it gets fantastic and phenomenal performance while gaming, while doing any everyday task. And because you have a smaller display, but the same amount of power, graphical performance inside of games and applications could slightly be better. But a Geekbench reveals that mostly these are the same devices because they're being powered by the same thing. Of course, two gigabytes of RAM is standard as well. User interface interaction is pretty good. I've noticed that the software is a little laggy, a little buggy here and there. You'll notice a stutter once in a while. I'm sure that'll be ironed out. And getting to wireless, Apple has upgraded the Wi-Fi capabilities to that of the 6S, but the LTE capabilities are still a step down. You don't get as many LTE bands at 20 versus 23 on the 6S, and the top speed is limited to 150 megabit download speed versus 300. So Apple is clearly keeping the performance high, but in all other areas, this thing is the same. The Touch ID fingerprint sensor is even the same. But battery life is something I'm very proud of with the iPhone SE. The battery is larger than the 5S, 1642 milliamps versus 1560. So that means in actual real world life usage, this thing outperforms the iPhone 6S and 5S. If that's important to you, battery life is a huge choosing factor for the iPhone SE. Now what else? 
What else about the SE? Apple included a new front facing flash. The Apple logo on the back is now milled instead of a screen print and you now have Apple Pay. So you can use your phone finally to pay and you're not limited or forced to upgrade to a 6S in order to do so. This is definitely a very good one. And Apple did add untethered Hey Siri for hands-free usage of Siri and live photos. But let's get to cameras. So cameras are very important. The best thing about the SE camera is that it's flush and it doesn't protrude like the 6S camera does. Otherwise, it's the exact same camera as the iPhone 6S. The capabilities are all the same, no watering down here. I'm very proud of Apple for keeping it that way. 4K video, live photos, all the good juicy stuff, and especially slow motion. So how does it look? Let's take a look at some footage I quickly shot with the iPhone SE out in the great Northwest. You know, colors look great. They're not as juicy or vibrant as the Galaxy S7, but still stand out. I think it's a shame that Apple makes optical image stabilization exclusive to the iPhone 6S Plus. I don't like all the fragmentation between models, but overall, for camera capability, I am very surprised. Indoor, outdoor, it's all the same as the iPhone 6S, and we've been over that extensively. Photography, exactly the same. Really nothing to talk about here because it's the same as the iPhone 6S. It's good. Could be better, will be better next year with the iPhone 7. And to wrap this up, here's my opinion on the iPhone SE. Would I ever downgrade from my 6S Plus to the iPhone SE? No, I don't miss a more comfortable display. You know, I've learned to live with the trade-offs. Better resolution, better battery life, a better camera, and more. Really, I just cannot see myself ever going back down to an iPhone SE. But I would recommend this to anybody that's looking for a smaller phone. And it's cheap. $400 is crazy for what you get in this phone. I honestly think it's a bargain. For Apple, it costs $160 to build. So obviously, they're making some money in there too. But hey, at $400, this thing gives you quite the kick. It's definitely no second coming of the iPhone. It has no new revolutionary or amazing features. It's just recycled. Everything about it is not original. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. What made the other iPhones great makes this one great in a smaller, more comfortable form factor. So thanks so much for watching my review, guys. Have a great day. Peace.